Right, hi guys, Kaz here. I thought I would take this opportunity while we're indoors to do a video about these, uh, about the Luggy Scooter. It's actually 10 years this spring that I actually first bought my Luggy Scooter and I was just thinking that after 10 years of using it, it might be useful to do a video and tell people a little bit about how I find the scooter, um, how, what I use it for and just some useful information that I probably found useful back when I was deciding to buy the scooter and I just thought take the opportunity to do a video and um, see if it's of use to you. So yeah hopefully it provides some useful information to you. If not I'm um, sorry about boring you but um, hopefully it'll give you some insights about the scooter, how I got to use it, um, the reasons I picked it and just some general kind of information that well I suppose the thought process I went through and buying the scooter, using the scooter and how I kind of go about actually using it and making it work well for me. So um, the first thing I would like to say is that how I ended up buying the scooter. Um, initially I just wanted a scooter. I wanted, I, I, just, I just wanted a scooter. I was, I suppose at the end of my tether at the time I was still walking around with one crutch. So I'd use one crutch and just kind of walk around with that and that was good for short distances it kept my muscles moving and it was just quite useful so far in work and and I think walking around is actually more I suppose it's it's more useful to your body and to your mind and it's just I suppose that there's a good feel good factor on it it's just keeps the body moving keeps the muscles working and I think it's just useful but what I was finding is that it was getting difficult to get about for long distances. So, for example, here in Manchester, if I was going to the traffic centre, it was just an absolute nightmare. And I just thought, I mean, I just, like I said, I'd reached the end of my tether and thought, I just need to have a, uh, I need to have a scooter. So, like everyone, I suppose I selected one that everyone's probably seen. The, it's always like a maroon scooter. The battery comes apart, the seat comes apart, and that's like the standard scooter. There's a few differences in like in the way it looks or some cosmetic, but generally that's what scooters look like. So I picked mine, very excited, and I said to a friend, said to my friends, yeah, this is the scooter I'm gonna get. And um, one of me friends stroke colleagues from the MS Society, he says to me, Kaz, that's the wrong scooter for you. And I was like, quite uh, frustrated and not quite angry, but I was like, what do you mean it's not the right one for me? But I mean, I didn't quite say that, I was like, why is it not the right one for me? He says, well, Kaz, you seem like an independent person you like to get about, and I just don't think that's the right scooter for you. I can't see you lifting the battery out. I can't see you changing the uh, seat. And it will mean that someone always has to be with you, and I just can't, I just can't see that happening for you, or I just can't see you using it. And I was, like I say, I was quite frustrated and quite annoyed. I was like, well, I need this for my own independence. And here's you telling me I can't have the scooter or I shouldn't have this scooter. And um, I was quite, uh, like I say, I wasn't, wasn't best pleased. But then I thought, they've said it for a reason. So let's have a think about it and see what we can do. So um, while I was thinking about what other scooters are available, and they all seem the same. My uh, sister, I mean, I was talking at home about it. My sister said, well, I've seen this scooter. I'll send you the link. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, do it. And like, people are always trying to help out. I just thought... She's doing her best, so I thought, yeah, I'll have a look at the link. But when she sent me the link, it wasn't what I was expecting. I was like, wow, it kind of literally just blew me away. I was so shocked and surprised because to see this scooter, because the scooter that she sent is a video that I'm sure anyone who's researched the luggie has seen. It's that one with a theme tune in the background, and uh, you can see the person going around, I think, some sort of mall or shopping centre, and... Uh, I was like, wow, this scooter looks quite impressive and it looks something similar to what I was kind of, well, something I'd never seen before, but I was kind of hoping to see. So I saw this scooter and um, as mentioned, many have seen the video before and um, I was in the showing how it works. It goes into the back of the car. It goes into the side of the car. It, you can fold it up. You can fold it in half. You can do this. You can do that. And I was like, wow, this is really impressive. I suppose the only thing that frustrated me with it and the most scooter videos are there's always like an able-bodied person using it, so they kind of just stop and then walk for the rest of the direction quite easily. And I'm like, anyway, I'll park that for the moment. That's just my own frustration. But um, yeah, the whole point of this scooter was that 
it was very um, very like you, you could pull it along like a suitcase you could fold it in half put it in the back you could fold it into like a cube and almost have it just literally that size in the back of the car and I was just very very surprised by it so then I said no I'm gonna go for this scooter and I uh, told my friend about it the MSSI society the one that didn't like my previous scooter he says yeah that was absolutely right because you could use it on your own and it's quite small it's very and um, I think at the time I was only about 30 years old and he says you're quite young Kaz so that actually kind of looks quite trendy as well so it kind of suits what you're looking for and then I was like oh so I'm glad he mentioned it and he did because now so I kind of <clears throat> got in touch with the local shop um, there was, and it's only down the road from me in Manchester a place called Lee um, so um, I got in touch with them and uh, there's a place called Local Mobility so yeah got in touch with Local Mobility he said oh I've seen your see these scooters on the on YouTube do you have any in stock and they're like yeah yeah sure come around have a look and uh, cut long story short saw it fell in love with it and that was the one I bought that's the one the furthest away from me so I've got two scooters now so that's the first one uh, and then I kept hold of that even when I got my second one I was gonna put it on eBay or something but my mum says I'll oh, just keep it you never know and now it's become my holiday scooter so every time I go away on holiday I take that because at least if it's going to go on the plane and go to different locations at least if it gets damaged or scratched it's not my best scooter so like this is almost like my fancy scooter if you like or the one that I use um, when I'm going anywhere and the other one's obviously just holidays only so yeah so that's how I came about um, using the scooter to make the decision to use a scooter for a person who's never used one before or never been in a wheelchair before is quite a daunting one no one, to be honest, I don't think anyone's life choice is to use a scooter. And um, I used to make up so many excuses. I mean, uh, just, I didn't, like I say, I didn't want to use it. And I just, I think, I think it's just pride. You're so used to people seeing you able-bodied or using a stick or just basically being able to do things yourself. And then suddenly have to use a scooter. I was like having quite nightmares, but... I was almost worried like thought, well, what happens if I see somebody I know and what happens if I see somebody that used to remember me when I used to run around playing football and you didn't want the pride but then I thought I don't really care I have a right to a life and I need to live my life and if I kind of keep coming up with excuses for why I don't want to go places I'm just going to miss out and um, and initially when I started so I mean so yes so that that's what it was so then I suppose well, the, the third thing I really want to talk about is when I initially started using it. I mean, I started using it, I was like, wow, why didn't I do this before? Because it's so useful. I can start doing things. I mean, the excuses I used to come out with, I used to just start saying things like, oh, I don't want to go somewhere or I don't want to do this. And using the scooter was just, it was like a new lease of life. The benefits of using the scooter were just amazing. I, I suddenly had to stop. Well, not suddenly, I, just, I suddenly didn't have to stop doing things. Of course, I'm not saying you can go down a ski slope or something. But then again, you never know. Arthur Wang might invent something in the future that uh, allows you to go skiing. But the point I'm making is that you, you start getting this new lease of life. And what it's, I mean, what this, what's the scooter done for me? It's, um, it's given me independence, given me freedom. It's given me a second chance at life. Not a second chance at life, that's not dramatic. No, it's not dramatic at all. It has, it gives you a new life. You can suddenly start going anywhere. The excuses I used to make, when someone used to say to me, do you want to go to the travel centre? Or, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ill, I'm not well. Oh, I don't feel like, oh, I had a busy day at work. I mean, I'm sure anyone who's probably been in a similar situation has made up every excuse in the book. And then uh, suddenly when you start using it and you kind of give in to the pride, you can start and people start saying oh yeah that's a really great idea it's like when i first started using crutches i mean initially i didn't used to use any crutches at all i used to just kind of walk around and fall and when i started using a crutch people said well that's a great idea why didn't you do that from before and i was like god why didn't you tell me that from before so uh, with the scooter i thought i'd be a bit more proactive i don't want to wait till i have to use it I'm going to use it and give myself a better chance at life and doing things so i could go to the traffic center i can go shopping, I could I, I, I could do things at my own leisure. 
of course it was it was a different obviously going on the scooter instead of walking but to be honest it was a lot easier i didn't really have to strain myself tire myself i could still go to work go to see family go see the, do the things i wanted to do and still enjoy getting out and about and one the other thing that also helps is it helps other people because then you think about as a i suppose as a person who has a as a someone who has a disability you always think about yourself this is like it's like this for me i can't do this i i and it's always about me but the freedom and independence it gives other people as well so like all of a sudden like friends family they don't have to worry like oh should we go oh i don't know if cas can walk that far oh i can't don't know if cas can do this or oh, will he be able to do this you've given people a new option so friends and family if they're going for a walk around the park they'll say we're going for a walk in the park do you want to come dead easy sit on the scooter off you go um uh, we're all going out uh, to the restaurant tonight do you want to come yeah i will do because before I used to be thinking, right, how many steps from my car to this restaurant? Can I do this? Can I do that? And the scooter takes away all those barriers for me and for other people because other people feel more relaxed that you can get about and they can invite you to more things. And of course, yeah, I mean, I'm not playing five-a-side football or something, I suppose. <coughs> There's some things you can't do, but it does open doors for you and give other people, like I say, it helps other people more than you think. And... Um, for you it doesn't you're not making as many excuses um in terms of how i've um how i've used a scooter and how i've looked after it like i say that first scooter there is about 10 yeah literally 10 years old i mean it still it looks it's a bit battered and bruised and stuff but it still works uh what helps is doing things like servicing i mean it's quite a it's it's, it's, it's quite a strange thing that you get in your car i mean of, of course we're used to having this a life where cars get serviced but to, to service your scooter is quite strange so I mean luckily for me like say local mobility are only down the road from me they're uh, uh, just in like say in Lee so it's probably like a half an hour's drive but like I say I know that, I mean, I mean, pe people are around the country can buy a scooter so it's not uh, like I say they'll get about and they'll help you out but for me it was quite good because they'd say oh Kaz um, it's time for you do you want to service your scooter and I'll kind of volunteer it myself because when I take my scooter everywhere dirt tracks I mean some of it's probably not advisable but I like to get about but um so yeah I took I took my scooter and they said oh Kaz would you would you be requiring a courtesy scooter and I always used to find that quite funny a courtesy scooter that'd be this and I used to I never, I never used to say no even if I didn't really if I wasn't going to use it but sometimes it was really useful taking my scooter they'll come to the car take my scooter out put the new scooter in and uh, i'd have like a courtesy scooter for the day or just a couple of days or however long um, i was uh, putting it in for a service and it was just it's just quite a strange environment going out in your courtesy scooter and you always have to make it because they always give you the brand new one don't know if you go with your car you trade your car not trade your car in, but you your car goes in for repairs and there's always like a, a courtesy car which is always the newest car available and you know, the, the, the luggy was always the newest one available so I always enjoy putting my uh, scooter in for a service. Um, <clears throat> I mean another benefit that I'd like to mention is um, the size of the scooter. The size, I mean as you can see, I mean, I've, I mean I'm sure the specs are available online and uh, I'll see if I get a chance later to put a link in somewhere um maybe in the comments somewhere about the the scooter size but the scooter you can see it's quite narrow it's quite small and to be honest it's probably smaller than a normal kid's buggy so you can see how um, it'd be quite useful so when you go into people's houses you don't feel too awkward about bringing this big massive machine in and people don't know where to keep it or if you go into a restaurant like it's quite easy i mean i go to a restaurant slide over onto the chair and they can wheel that in the corner or most of the time it's that small put the steering wheel down and stick it in the table next to me just to the side of me so it's a uh, so yeah that's something so the size of it is very useful very small very useful and you don't feel too awkward with it um some of the in terms of where i've been with the scooter um i could tell i could, I could do a whole video about where i've been with the scooter but i mean I've been all over the place. I mean, some simple things like obviously the Trafford Centre, Nando's, which uh, I my family love. I mean, it's quite good for Nando's because you just kind of go in, slide over onto the Nando's chair. I mean, because these are great, but you still feel like to feel 
I suppose as normal as possible so while I still can I like to sit on the restaurant chair so I'll sit on the restaurant chair and um, move over and so yeah so malls shopping centers weekly shop at Tesco wherever it might be um, the Lake District yeah I've been to Lake District on it uh, been to London um, been on the Thames Bolt I mean like there's so many accessible things these days so been to London been to been to Turkey been to Mecca, been to Medina, been to Qatar, been to Malaysia, been to Yemen. I mean, I've been all over the world, I've been quite lucky actually, but it's uh, it's quite useful. I mean, so, so many places playing, going into the back garden, just nipping to the shops. I mean, there's so many, so many places. I've been to Peak District, uh, Wales, Scotland, I've been on the ferry to Northern Ireland. I mean, <clears throat> like I say, I've been loads of places and I could, I mean, if I get a chance, I'll try to do a proper video about holidays or something, but needless to say, you can get, you can get yourself about and it's a very, very highlight, I mean, very, very, loads of highlights and very, very useful. Um, another benefit I would say is um, transferring, uh, my transferring, I mean, like for me, moving from the scooter to the couch or moving from the scooter to the dining chair or to a restaurant chair or wherever and the good thing about the luggy scooter is i mean um this is like almost like a little tip the the seat that's like the lower level of the seat there's also two levels of the seat so higher and lower i would demonstrate it now but i don't really want to get into a demonstration video because i'm sure many viewers might already know about it but there's two levels of the scooter so if, if i know i'm going to nando's and the seat is so high I'll make sure I've got it on the lower level so when I'm from the car to Nando's I can literally slide over because you don't I mean of course you can use your upper body strength and move yourself over but I'm always trying to make life easy for myself so that's one of the things I would say and if you're someone who likes needs to get up from the scooter and you don't want to go from to a lower base you can maybe have it at a higher level so when you're getting up or for example if you're transferring onto the disabled toilets or using facilities anywhere you're at a higher level so you can stand straight up but once again that's very much dependent on what works best for you um so it's like I say that, that that that's really good uh, actually speaking of while i'm out and about i always kind of have like i mean i've got two chargers now because obviously i've got two scooters but this is like see it looks just like a laptop charger it doesn't look like anything strange so sometimes if i'm going to costa coffee or something and i'm not sure if i've got enough charge I'll just take this with me and like I say, it's very quite a standard uh, um, charging socket. You just put it in there, a normal plug socket, so you just plug it in. So I just treat it like, it's like, like a laptop charger. You see many people get the laptops out, stick it on charge. I did the same with my scooter, just put it on charge, put it in a plug hole and jobs are good. And so, um, so yeah, it, it makes it very useful. So yeah, there's a couple of... Uh, <clears throat> so maybe some useful uh, places I've been to and maybe ideas about how you can use a transfer in. Um, in terms of, I suppose, maybe, I suppose I've had it for 10 years now. I mean, you don't know how, uh, like for me, I have MS, multiple sclerosis, and obviously that prog I have a progressive nature, so it progresses over time. So 10 years ago when I was using the stick, uh, now I'm probably using more the scooter permanently. So I very rarely walk, I mean, but I can't walk, so I'd be kind of dragging myself rather than walking and maybe using um, like grab rails and stuff to kind of move myself from one place to another. Uh, but I mean, in terms of the future or the next 10 years, I don't know, I don't. I mean, I've got my second scooter now, but the, the guys at Luggy, they're doing some enhancements so you can get like pull down arm, arm rests. And I think there's, a, there's an updated version of the scooter as well. I think there's a Luggy Elite as well. So I think they have one that's slightly bigger. So if you've got someone who needs more space or they're a bigger person, they have a different type of scooter. Well, not the different, I mean, this, this, it looks exactly the same, but it's uh, it's just, like I say, slight enhancements. I suppose like, like when, you buy, I suppose when you buy a car, there's always extras you can get fitted on there. But for me, the way it comes is the way I like it. I mean, I didn't have to buy any extras on there and stuff. So it's, it's really, really good. But there are different versions available, so I mean, I don't really want to talk through them now and make this about different buggy scooters, but th there are different ones available, so I'm sure you could go on their website and have a look. Um, 
Um, yeah, so you can have a look at the website and if, if you're really interested in looking at the different types of scooter, mine's just a standard luggy. Um, it has the lithium batteries, which is great for going abroad and stuff. It's what they call a dry cell battery. Um, the thing they do, uh, yeah, like I said, there's different types of luggy, so go on the website because I don't want to kind of misquote anything on there. Um, yeah. uh, other thing I'd like to mention is accessibility. I think accessibility has changed even in the last 10, 20 years. I mean, of course, I'm not, I mean, if you, for those of you who can remember back to the 1980s, I still remember there's like this MS Society poster that used to go in the train stations and it used to show a picture of how to lift someone in a wheelchair up the steps. And that was like official public or government guidance. But you can see we've come a long way from the, you know, one, one of the things that I like about accessibility these days is that it doesn't look accessible, but it is. Um, there's a place in Manchester near the AMC cinemas, I think it's called AMC, but just off Deansgate, there's some steps that go up to what, towards where the cinema is. And um, within the steps, there's already a ramp built into it. So you can't even tell it's accessible. So I'm literally using the steps like everyone else, but I'm going diagonally because that's taking me up the ramp rather than people who are using the stairs. I mean, it's, it's very cleverly done. and. Uh, and I think views on accessibility and inclusion have really changed. So I think if you see someone in a wheelchair now, it's not a case of, wow, they're in a wheelchair. It's almost like, okay, I mean, it's not such a big deal anymore. And I think over time, things have really, really changed. And I think um, I, I like that for someone like for someone like myself. I think it's great. I think uh, it makes it easier for other people. Like if you've never used a scooter before, then I think it's... Not a great time to get one. I mean, I think it's always a great time to get one because you need to give yourself that freedom, the independence, give, you, give yourself your life back. But um, I just think it's it's great that inclusion. So I mean, like, you get more automatic doors, you get more uh, accessible entrances. I mean, there's so many more accessible features these days, and the accessibility is the way we're thinking these days. We don't have to say well, why has it not been done. It's almost like part and parcel of the way things are meant to be. So. I think that's really good. Uh, <clears throat> another thing I would say about the scooter, I think it's very innovative. It doesn't look like your average scooter, like this scooter I described at the start of the video, that's maroon, separate, separate battery, separate thing. They all seem to look the same, but this looks a bit different and they look a bit... I don't, would, would you, I don't know, I mean, would you say it looks a bit trendy? I suppose it looks fashionable and all. I suppose uh, scooters... Maybe, maybe they are, maybe they should be trendy and fashionable because we're still people, we still like things in different ways, we don't want things just the same as they've, as they've always been. So I, I think it's very, very trendy and fashionable. One of the things I do remember, I mean, for, for those of you who know me, like I work in social media and I'll end up going to exhibitions and expos and like just trade shows basically. And I remember once I was dotting around on this and obviously I was dressed in my shirt and my blazer jacket and trying, obviously trying to do the best to look smart for work. And uh, I was using my scooter and this uh, and this bloke said to me, hey, that's really good, where do you get that from? And I was like, what? He says, no, no, which stand are you at? And I was like, I'm not at a stand, I'm just a delegate visiting the event. And he says, oh, right, you don't sell this then? I went, no, no. He's, and he was like, oh, right, I thought you sold it. And he was just showing it off. And I was like, quite, uh, I was quite, I took it as a compliment because I thought he actually thinks it's that good that people are using it just out of choice. So he didn't think of me as being someone who with a disability who needed to use a scooter. <clears throat> he just saw me as someone who wanted to use a scooter and just out of choice. So it means that the style and the, I suppose, the spec must look quite fashionable and trendy and something that an, an able-bodied person would use out of choice. So I was actually quite, quite pleased to get that feedback. And I thought, right, I'm gonna remember that because it's something that people like, something that, people obviously see in a positive way and I thought that was quite good. So I think that's quite useful and I think it's something that is, uh, is seen in the right way. It just looks like a fancy electronic gadget rather than a mobility scooter. And I think people can remember back to it. It's good to see innovation. I think uh, I remember when I was a child or I was a kid and you'd see in the what do you call it in the disabled bay, uh, disabled parking bays? You'd see like a a blue car. It'd be like a one person, and it'd be you could tell it was 
like when you, when you'd ask your parents or someone to say, yeah, and disabled people use that, and it, you just look like a normal. Like say, an average, a normal car can be used for someone who's got like the, the enhancements and the adaptations you can make. You can use any car, and same with scooters. I think scooters have come a long way. I think like what Luggy have done with the scooter is just fantastic. I mean. I had the pleasure of meeting the uh, not meeting the guy who made it, Arthur Wang, and he was telling me about how he designed it for his wife because she struggled to get about. He wanted to make something that she could use in the house and still get about. And I mean, you could, I think they always, there's a saying in there, like, some of the best ideas come out of adversity and stuff, but I'm just lucky to benefit from it. And I'm sure there must be thousands and probably even millions of people out there who benefited from the luggy. But yeah, as an innovation point of view, I think it's really good. Um, in terms of, I suppose, we round off with like the best thing I like about the scooter. The best thing I like about the scooter is uh, the char. Um, oh yeah, I like the charging. I think the charging is good. I think the folding aspect is very good. Like you can fold this in a number of different ways. And as I mentioned, there's that video at the side. So I I only bring this steering wheel down, put it down, put this down like that, and leave it like that, and then just hurl it into the back of the car so I don't even close it as it, sh as it should be closed but um, oh, there's ways you can, you, can, you can lower the seat you can put the steering wheel down I mean there's so many different ways of closing it it's just very useful and I think that's another thing I like about it you don't have to fold it the way it's meant to be folded whatever works best for you when I'm going like if um, like if I'm going in my car and the whole family is coming and we're going for a family day out somewhere and we need every seat, it can be folded up into almost like a cube shape, a little bigger than like I mean, literally that big. So that can just go in the back of the car. Or if you don't want that, if you've been someone if you like for example, um <clears throat> if for example I'm using a taxi or something, the taxi driver can fold it halfway and just put it into his back boot. So there's loads and loads of options and I think like the charging, the folding and it's very useful to be in <clears throat> One of the other things I like about it is, well, is the durability. I mean, as I say, I've had that one for the furthest one away for 10 years. I've had this one for probably about four or five years now, I think. Yeah, probably about four or five. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the other one there, like I say, it looks a bit battered and bruised, but that's been everywhere. It's been on the plane, been, probably been thrown off planes, then taken here, taken there. And this one's sort of for five years. Like I said, treated with a bit more respect because I have my um holiday scooter over there so it probably doesn't get bumped around as much but you can just like I say you can still look after them and stuff but they're very durable I mean like like I say <clears throat> they're just they're very strong I mean they're very like I mean like I'll, sometimes I'll use it to lift myself up I mean I'm, that's not advice by the way but I always I mean it's, it's, it just feels strong I mean it's it, it doesn't feel delicate. I mean, I'm, I'm like I said, I quite, use it quite roughly, throw it into the car, and <clears throat> like I'll, I'll put the scooter into the car in a very particular way. So I'll, I'll just always chuck it in. Sometimes I'll take it out, I'll drop it, and it, does, it still works. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't go out trying to break it. So if you're at the luggy or something, I don't try to break it or make it out. But, I mean, you use it the way you use it. You can't always be very gentle and delicate with things because I suppose that's just the nature of it. You need something that's going to work around what you do. And uh, I suppose that's where the service is kicking it. I suppose it's useful to keep it service, but it's great. I mean, both have got the original batteries in, so I've never even had to change the battery. So that battery's 10 years old, this one's five years old. Um, I, I use it for charging, but yeah. In terms of the best features, I think, are, are the charging, the, f the way it falls and the, and the durability. So um, anyway, I hope I've not you, bored you too much with the, the video. Hope you found it useful. If anyone has any questions, as always, feel free to ask me. I mean, when I'm out and about, people are always asking about the scooter. Where do you get it from? Where do you this and that? And I'm always helpful. If it, because if it can change your life, if it can give you freedom, independence and can really make a positive difference in your life, please, please do it. And please feel free to ask me any questions. Um, if I get a chance, I'll try to post some pictures somewhere or something, but uh, we'll see, yeah. And if there's any videos you want me to do, give me a shout, like I so I'm at home at the moment with uh, what's going on. So um, this is a good opportunity to do some videos, but um, yeah, hopefully you found it useful. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.